G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's Friday afternoon here in Australia and the market is oh so close to kind of breaking old, you know, its old previous sort of highs. So the market cap nearly at 1.8 trillion, Bitcoin nearly getting to that kind of $57,500 mark, which was the top for the daily closes. And we can see there's a bit of green in here, a little bit of red in the last sort of hour or so. But again, we are getting closer to the weekend. So again, it is pretty much the weekend here in Australia, Friday afternoon, Friday evening. So it's more what happens in the States than that. And will we see the traditional weekend sell-off that we have and how corrective will it be? Will it just be something small and then we quickly recover and fire on next week to all new, uh, new all-time highs? Or is this maybe a bit of a fake out where we almost broke it and then we have a bit of a bigger correction? I get the feeling like that second one is not it. I really do think the bottom was in and now it's likely we're going to continue to move our way up. I don't know how fast and how hectic it's going to be, whether it's been like what we've previously seen or not, or whether it's going to be a bit more slow and gradual, or whether maybe it's even harder than what it was before. And we've got some stories that might give us a bit of an indication. But as we can see, Bitcoin dominance around about 60%. So people are getting back into Bitcoin at the moment. They probably feel like it's going to go on a run. And so profits will come out of the altcoins and generally go into Bitcoin. Ethereum uh, dominance down a little bit. So 11.7, we were up around sort of, I think we got to nearly 14, 15% at one stage there. But we have been hang hovering around the kind of 12 and a half, 13% on occasions. Gas prices are going up, so 127. So something's obviously happening. People are either moving stable coins into cryptocurrencies at the moment. That's what generally spikes the price up. Or people are simply uh, buying and trading uh, Ethereum ERC20 tokens. That also does it as well. But predominantly, it is a lot to do with the stable coins. They really do uh, take up a majority of the gas fees and things like that. All right, so what's really pumped in 24 hours? Boom, scale, almost 100%, up 280% in seven days. All right. Now, I never give financial advice because I can't, because I'm not a financial advisor. But my personal opinion is if something went up 280% in seven days and near 100% in 24 hours, I would probably take a little bit of profit. That's me. you got to decide what works for you. Chili's just continues to go. They are really doing extremely well. Same with Polygon, all the announcements about you know them going multi-chain and multi-solution uh, i really am glad that i held on to my matic slash polygon because i really was thinking about selling it so many times and i've said this in previous uh podcasts that i've done or vlogs whatever you want to call them that i actually lost so when i initially bought my polygon or matic it got down to a nearly a 50% loss at times. It didn't last for too long, but I was quite regularly sitting at about sort of a 20 to 30% loss for Matic. And yeah, I can't tell you how many times I thought, I'm just going to sell this and go into things that are doing well. And I've held, and now it's one of my better performing coins. And I expect it to do a whole lot better as well. All right, plenty of green here. I mean, have a look at this. Some really, really good green. Uh, and you know, again, for me, anything above 15%, in cryptocurrencies in 24 hours that's a pretty good gain you know traditional markets they'd be loving 15% in a quarter or even in a year you know we do that in 24 hours and look anything above 15% and particularly when you're getting into you know 20% plus you know you're doing really well so it's great when you're doing really well what about when you're not doing so well has anything really dumped in the last 24 hours NEM all right not sure what's going on with them, but they're obviously having a bit of a hard time at the moment. They've lost 40% in seven days, but I'm going to say, and it's a bit of a guess, I don't know for sure because I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure they did pretty well in the weeks previously. So this is just, again, you know, if something goes up by a couple of hundred percent, you're probably going to lose, you know, I don't know, anywhere from sort of two thirds, sorry, one third to maybe two thirds of that before it finds its bottom and then starts to make its way back up or before it find its, finds a bottom and then just kind of levels out for a while. That's what generally happens. Synthetics Network down a little bit. Again, they pumped up and so they pulled back. Ran, Phantom. But look, these losses at the moment, like 6%, that's not really that bad. Again, not in crypto anyway. That's almost like nothing. And 6% over the last seven days 
and 6.2% of that is in the last 24 hours. So I'd say by the looks of this chart, it's probably found a bottom here, down around, I don't know what price that is, but it's found a bottom, peaked out and come over and will hopefully find its way back up, but we'll have to wait and see. Look, really, really minor kind of losses, nothing too major except for this one here with NEM. But again, I'm pretty sure they had a fairly good pump in the probably last you know, 14 days not the last seven days, about 14 days ago. All right, moving on. As we can see, this was the old all-time high for Bitcoin. It was around about sort of here. So 57,595, it looks like that was just breached. So 57,706, there you go, seems like it was around, or maybe here, 57,817-ish. And now we've had a slight pullback. Again, is that to do with the weekend? Or is it just a bit of a pullback at the moment? Again, it's still very early in the day. This is only seven here, so it's got a few more hours to go. We'll have to wait and see. Do we have a bit of a weekend pullback? And again, maybe come back and sort of test something like this, the $54,000 mark, or even possibly this, something more around the $55,000, $56,000 mark, before then starting to make our next way up, starting next week. That's my, my assumption at the moment, is that's what I think. We have a bit of a weekend pullback. And then we just simply start to make our way back up and maybe start to really have a test of the 70,000 range. You know, that's my guess. I never provide financial advice, just my personal opinion. That's what I'm expecting. Could be wrong though, and we could have a big sell off, but I just don't see it happening. All right, here's the stories. So, China's social media app Weibo, or Weibo, probably Weibo, reportedly bans the accounts of Binance, OKX, and Huobi. So while some Chinese companies have purchased BTC and ETH, others, such as the social media giant Weibo, or Weibo, again, I don't know how it's pronounced, let's say uh, Weibo, have reportedly halted the accounts of three of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges, Binance, Huobi, and OKX. Weibo has justified its decision by outlining abnormal practices, practices and breaching security risks. All right, interesting, I guess, you know, for, you know, for these companies inside China, that's gonna hurt, and they are a really big market, but really outside of China, that won't affect them too much. And, you know, look, the Chinese government, uh, who probably own uh, Weibo anyway, they do things like this fairly regularly, so it's not, not so much ban them uh, outright, but they just, yeah, they do some weird and wonderful things, like YouTube cracking down on, uh, cryptocurrency vloggers every now and then and no one really knows why it happens they just do it and I get the feeling like it's them just you know flexing a little bit and letting them know who's the boss and who's really in charge so no good for these uh, platforms in China but really outside of China it doesn't hurt but China is a big market right backed so the New York State Department of Financial Services or the NYDFS has announced that Backed Marketplace has become the 29th cryptocurrency company to receive a bit license since 2015. Now, they're only the 29th though, so not too many have happened, not quite 30, and they have. there's only been you know 29 of them in the last, well, what's that, 2015, in the last six years, so that is not a lot. That's around about sort of 70 year-ish, thereabouts. This approval comes amid the firm's endeavours to be publicly listed to launch on the long-awaited backed app. So traditional finance now is just moving into crypto finance. Crypto finance will end up just simply being traditional finance. Uh, it's all happening uh, in front of us. And depending on sort of you know, how long you've been in the space. Some, some people might say it's happening really fast if they've only maybe just joined this year, but you know, if they've been in for the last sort of five years to maybe even 10 years since the original inception of Bitcoin and things like that, then it has been a long process to get, you know, these big players here, but they are definitely here. And yeah, I think, again, what we call, what we call traditional finance, cryptocurrency will be part of that. Cryptocurrency is called the future of finance at the moment, but I think it will just be traditional finance in the not too distant future at all. All right, Alex Jones, speaking of people uh, on YouTube, so YouTubers, says he lost 10,000 Bitcoin. Wow, that would hurt. 
So the controversial host of InfoWars and the Alex Jones Show claims that he has lost a laptop containing 10,000 bitcoins. The laptop was given to him by popular television personality Max Kaiser, who's a big Bitcoin bug, uh, who confirmed the story. So yeah, I bet that's what his face is looking at, looking like right now. 50,000 times 10,000. That's about half a million. No, that'd be more. I have no idea how much that's worth, but that is a lot of money. And I'd absolutely be, yeah, tears coming out my eyes, all sorts. I'd be contemplating, <laughs> you know, where I went wrong to lose 10,000 Bitcoin. But anyway, I don't think he's crying poor at the moment, although he's, again, probably quite upset and distressed that he lost that much. Right, Bitcoin futures. So open interest hits new all-time high as traders flock to derivatives. Traders are racing to speculate on Bitcoin in the derivatives market with open interest in Bitcoin futures approaching 20 billion for the first time. Every time these contracts run out at the moment, which I think is around about monthly or something like that, it's setting a new all-time high. So this just goes to show this space is growing. And yes, we're gonna have pullbacks, which we've seen over the last sort of you know week to two weeks. But overall, the space is growing and people are just more and more bullish. Uh, and they're putting their money where their mouth is. And particularly when the prices go down, they're just jumping on board. All right, ETH 2.0. This really excites me. So ETH 2 transition accelerates amid rub rumblings of a minor rebellion. So the miners aren't happy about ETH 2.0 because they basically get sort of cut right out of the picture, can't charge all these exorbitant gas fees, and they don't produce any Ethereum anymore. Uh, and Ethereum, the development squad in the community, obviously want ETH 2.0 to get rid of the gas fees. And it sounds like the miners are trying to rebel against it and that they might be pushing ETH 2.0 through a little bit quicker than expected. Not too fast, but just quicker than what they expected. And in saying that, excuse me, I think most people would have to be pretty happy with that in all fairness. I don't think anyone's gonna complain if ETH 2.0 comes out. But I also think it's not just a minor rebellion, it's simply that the use of Ethereum has slowed down a little bit. Other than the big whales and institution, you know, institutions getting in, the, av the average trader, they, they can't do anything with Ethereum, period. And, and they're still a big part of the market. So I do think that, you know, particularly DeFi and that, nothing on DeFi can be used by anyone other than whales. You just can't afford to do it. And I really think that has a little bit to do with why Ethereum 2.0 is going to happen quicker. And I did say that a few, a few vlogs ago that I thought, you know, that they just wouldn't sit on their heels and let these other chains gain too much traction on them and they would make a move. And I, I get the feeling like ETH 2.0 might be sort of completely rolled out, possibly by the end of this year. Now that's just me taking a bit of a guess, but I, I do think it's possibly gonna come by the end of this year. And maybe not uh, the end of this year, it could be early next year, but it'll be out quicker than the couple of years that they're expecting, simply because people want to come to Ethereum, but those gas prices are stopping them. And yeah, DeFi particularly, they really need all of this stuff. And they know that the 100x uh, performance gains that they're likely to get from optimistic roll-ups and things like that, which are coming very, very soon, they aren't gonna help ETH when the, you know, basically the entire world comes to it. They need ETH 2.0 for that. So yeah, I do think ETH 2.0, if it's not rolled out by the end of this year, I do think it'll probably be rolled out by sometime next year. I don't think they can hold off for too much longer. But in saying that, I don't want them to rush it. I want them to make sure they do rigorous testing in that. All right, crypto platforms. Falcon X, it raises 50 million on the back of institutional adoption. So Falcon X, a cryptocurrency exchange focused on institutional investors only, has raised 50 million from Tiger Global and B Capital Group, highlighting once again that the digital assets are becoming more mainstream. And as I said just before, they will be just mainstream, not more mainstream, they are going to be mainstream. The future of finance slash IE crypto is going to be traditional finance. That is just the way it's gonna be. It's not at the moment, but that is definitely where it's going. No one will be calling cryptocurrency the future of finance in a decade's time. It'll just be finance. 
All right, could we be getting a Bitcoin ETF in the US finally? I don't know, Scaramucci, he seems pretty confident. So Anthony Scaramucci is optimistic the United States might get a Bitcoin ETF by the end of the year. That's still pretty late in the game by the end of the year, but look, it's better than nothing. And I do think it will bring a lot more money to Bitcoin. Although in, in all fairness, I think it's gonna come anyway, even without an ETF. You know, traditional finance, as I said, is becoming cryptocurrency finance. So we don't technically need an ETF, but it probably wouldn't be too bad. So Skybridge Capital Hedge Fund co-founder and former White House staffer, Anthony Scaramucci, is hopeful we'll see a Bitcoin ETF in the United States approved by the end of this year. And he's basing that hope on President Biden's choice of Gary Gensler to run the SEC. So there's a lot of being... Sorry, there has been a lot of bullish news around Gary Gensler taking the position of the SEC. You know, particularly in the XRP community, people are saying that he'll probably dismiss the case for XRP, but so far he hasn't done that. And, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It'd be great for XRP if that happened, but, you know, I still think the law has to prevail. And if XRP have been doing dodgy stuff, stuff you know like manipulating the price and holding it down and uh, f you know pumping the price up when it's not really supposed to be that price then you know they need to be held responsible that's just the way it is but that's not me against xrp or ripple i've got xrp uh, but you know if ripple's done the wrong thing then they must pay the penalty you know pay the piper as they say like the rest of us would now last but not least nfts oh my god so people he has sold his NFT for $69.3 million. Let's read. So a piece of digital artwork has sold for a mind-blowing $69.3 million at auction. Storied auction house Christie's has wrapped its, uh, its sale of every day's the first 5,000 days by a crypto artist Beeple. The winning bid just after 10 a.m. ET, uh, estimate ET, for the non-fungible token was a staggering 60.25 million. A last minute surge up to the final price to 69 million, three, 69 million, 346,250 dollars. It'll be interesting to know who bought that. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it might be someone like Shamath or Tim Draper, Mark Cuban, someone like that, I would say, is who's gone and bought this. I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, my gut feeling is I think it's probably Shamath. He would buy something like this. He's got the kind of money. He's a visionary and can really see the future. But also, Mark Cuban has been very bullish, not just on Bitcoin uh, and on cryptocurrencies in general, really, but also extremely bullish on NFTs. He's been quite outspoken about that. All right, that's it from me. This one's gone for a little while. It is Friday evening here in Australia. I've got to cook some dinner. I'm going to sit down, have a drink or two, and watch some rugby league. Then I've just got typical weekend stuff with the family. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train, which is really, really good. And I'll see you next time.